Hello, everyone. It's time for Vanishing Chicagoland Stories, the podcast. I'm your host, Pete Costanas. This is episode 317, season 13. Today's date is March 23rd, 2024, and welcome to the program. On today's show, this is a very special program for me and for you, your audience. <laughs> uh this is the third anniversary show of Van Chicago and Stories, the podcast, and I'm very excited. Wow, three years have passed on this uh, wonderful venture uh, that I've created. So I'll discuss uh, the beginnings of the show and uh, some of my favorite moments. Also, I will talk about uh, American businessman uh, Madman Months. He's totally forgotten but uh, he does uh, hold a special place in Chicago, and I will discuss uh, his biography and what he created uh, during that time when he was alive. So um, this should be very interesting. Uh, right now, the podcast will go into a commercial break. And this program is brought to you by Sinutab, and this is Sinus Medicine. So this is Max, Maximum Strength Sanyatam, and here's a commercial from 1984. So sit back and relax, and I'll be right back with the program, folks. Thank you. Are you missing something in your treatment of sinus? Introducing new Maximum Strength Sinutab with Maximum Decongestant to let you breathe again. Maximum Antihistamine to dry up runny nose, watery eyes. Maximum Non-Aspirin Pain Reliever for throbbing headache. New Maximum Strength Sinutab. You can't buy a stronger, more complete sinus remedy without a prescription. New Maximum Strength Sinutab. It's the most you can do for your sinuses. Okay, everyone, I am back. I hope you enjoyed the commercial for Sinutab. I remember this uh, medicine when I was a kid. I watched, I watched the commercials a lot about this. Uh, there was a big market for sinus relief. Uh, coincidentally, I have that right now. Uh, my head's kind of stuffy, and I've been uh, coughing and blowing my nose. Like that, I think I know not. I think I know why. Because uh, last week I went out without a coat, and you know, I I should have done that <laughs> because it was freezing that day. But uh, I've been having hot tea and blowing my nose. I'm much a little better now. So anyway, uh, this product, uh, I don't know if it's still around. Maybe I haven't seen it in the like, for example, in the drugstores like, for example, Walgreens or Osco in the Chicagoland area. But they advertise this uh, on t television, in magazine, you know, magazines and uh, newspapers throughout the probably the late seventies, almost all through the eighties and maybe nineties. There are others like Sudafed and all that. So I remember trying it. Maybe I did for one time or another. But I remember the product very well. So I, I guess this stuff worked. It really did. <laughs> Okay, at the beginning of the program, I mentioned I'm going to talk about the third anniversary of my podcast, Vanishing Goblin Stories. Then I'll talk about the American businessman, Mad Men Months. Before I get started, I want to talk about uh, my health status real quickly. Uh, this past week has been crazy. Uh, I, meant, I posted this on my social media accounts and I told people that I went to the oncologist, uh, I even forgot the day where I went, Tuesday, I think, or Wednesday I went, I believe. And he told me that uh, I took a, I had a PET scan done. Uh, then in, he explained that uh, it showed that the spot on my rib is... Uh, metastasize. I can't even say that word. It's cancer, but it's not that terrible. I mean, it's ter he says. So he came in and told me, "I got some mixed news to tell you." Uh, yeah, that spot is can cancer, but it's not spread over your body. And where the prostate, you know, the prostate cancer, there's nothing in that area, nothing, or the rest of your body. You're you're fine, you know, but it's just popped up. He mentioned like it's like you're plowing in a field and something pops up like that, like a like a vegetable. <laughs> now it could be 
from the microscopic cells where my urologist operated me four years ago, that they are they're real tiny. You can't even see them, see it. It might have been from there. I don't know. I have to talk to my urologist on Wednesday. I have an appointment with him. So he, he explained, uh, my oncologist explained, you're going to, well, we're going to schedule you for radiation. And I said, okay, that's fine, as long as it works. And he says, there's a very, very good chance uh, we'll get rid of it. Uh, if it doesn't work, th there's a small chance you will get chemotherapy. And I'm hoping it's not that. I, I don't want that. But chemotherapy might work, but that's a little severe. So I'm hoping the radiation would work. And um, so they faxed the paperwork to uh, the hospital. At University of Illinois Chicago, uh, they called, and I'm scheduled to have a consultation Monday with the radiologist, and uh, she's going to. Uh, it's a woman. She's going to discuss with me what's going to be done, how many sessions I'll have. So I asked my oncologist, "How many? How many do you think I'm going to have?" Uh, I had 39 days with radiation back in 2021. He says, "No, nothing like that." You probably get like five, between one and five or something like that. I hope I hope so. I hope it's a couple. So I have to find out Monday uh, how many we'll get. And she'll explain uh, if it's very severe, it, will it be going away once it, I go under treatment? And I hope it works. I hope it works. And I still have to continue my medications. Unfortunately, one of them ran out, is going to run out soon, and I can't get it refilled because of another insurance snag. I got to explain that to my urologist Wednesday. <coughs> Excuse me. So hopefully uh, once I find out Monday, I'll post uh, any updates on what's going on. And uh, But I feel fine. I still, I'm still tired. I'm still fatigued. You know, at night it's worse. It really is. I have to lie down most of the day and uh, get very drowsy and sleepy. I sleep pretty good at night, but I'm still tired. You know, I like to go for a walk, you know, walk around. I do a little bit. I like to resume my walking. It's still cold outside, but I just can't. I'm just, I'm just tired. I'm very tired. You know, uh, I've been eating well. You know, I've lost weight. But, you know, when you go to a doctor's office and you weigh yourself, sometimes it's a little contradictory. And then you weigh yourself at home. It's different. So I don't know what's right. A scale over there at the doctor's office or your scale at home. But I have an old-fashioned scale, so maybe I'll buy a digital one you know, just to be safe. But I feel thin. I feel thin. And then I'm eating okay. I have a good meal at dinner and uh, eat very lightly during the day. You know, so that's good. I don't have much of an appetite. Not really. Uh, like I said before, my oncologist says, if you're really losing weight a lot, then I would be very worried, but you're not. But if you're gaining a little weight or you're like, at, at, like uh, you're neutral, you're all right. You're all right. I guess I'm all right. So um, that's good. That's good. Okay, so I'll keep you posted on my health uh, as soon as I hear something next week. All right. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm in the coughing because I still have the cold. All right, so now, right now I'm going to talk about the third anniversary of Anne Chicagoland Stories. Um, this podcast, I did this last year. Uh, I talked about this last year, and that is, uh, I was going to start in the beginning of the year of 2020 in January. I took a course in uh, at a community college nearby my house. Uh, then you know I was I thought about doing one because I have a very interesting topic. You know I run band in Chicago. I, I, it's about places and people and events that happened that no longer exist, but it did happen back then. And I said to myself, why not? Why don't I do a podcast? You know, it's very popular and all that. Excuse me for a second. Drink some water. So, but then, you know, 2020 became a very bad year for me or for most people. 
uh, because I got sick. I got diagnosed with prostate cancer on December 2019, and I go, ah, I got to put it on the back. I got to delay it. So I had to get well. I had to get uh, operated, treated, uh, did radiation. So I found the right time to do it on in March of this week. I don't know ex the exact date of 2021. I decided then do a podcast. And I did the first episode, and it's kind of rocky and kind of uh, wet behind the ears. That was a hot mess. I was just awful. <laughs> I was just i never done this sort of thing before. You know, I have a very interesting topic because I'm not an actor. I'm not a celebrity. I'm not a, a lo like a news person. I'm just me. That's all. People know me as me. But once I uh, get started on the first episode, then I found more subjects to talk about, and it kept growing and growing and growing, and then... Uh, Sometimes I repeat a couple of them, well, more than a couple over the years. You know, I've done th over, this will be 317. That's a lot. Some were pretty good. Some were not good. And some were two-parters, three-parters, four-part four part episodes, you know, like special events, or if there was a death of a local celebrity or a regular celebrity that has ties to Chicago. I will talk about them. I would talk about businesses, for example, like department stores, banks, restaurants, toy stores, bakeries, anything like that. You know, and uh, I still get requests from people. They always say, can you talk about this? Can you talk about that? Can, you know, I, I do that. Uh, I haven't had a guest on a podcast. Uh, I've said this before. Uh, people send me messages and says, why don't you invite somebody? Or um, why don't you uh, you be a guest on the show? I have been guests on the show. As a matter of fact, I'll be one uh, soon, uh, very soon, next week, which I'm excited. That'd be great. Uh, that's going to be a little hard because, uh, sometimes, you know, I like to do a podcast in person with somebody. That'd be great. You go there. I mean, it's nice that you're comfortable at home, you know, with the technology we got now. You know, that's great. We could do that. It, to me, I like to see the person, in, you know, see the person in person, you know, <laughs> and do that. We do it together. So uh, that could happen soon. You know, that'd be great. Or, you know, I enjoy being a guest. I like that. They ask me questions and all that. So uh, the bottom line is I'm having a lot of fun with this, you know, and uh, it. Like I said before, it's uh, it was a little. Uh, I'm a little nervous. I still am, but it took time to grow, and it took time, you know, for people to listen and to enhance. And it took a long, long time. It really did. And then, uh, probably around last year, it caught on, and uh, people took notice. I started listening and whenever I go, uh, I get messages from people. They say, you do a good job. I love listening to you. I'm, I'm hooked on this. I binge hear you. There's binge watching, but now there's binge hearing, you know, and they listen. Sometimes they listen a second time, you know, I make mistakes. I admit it, you know, and they correct me for that. Also get negative comments. That's normal. You know, in social media, that's how it is. You get trolls or people that are like, why are you wasting your time doing this? Do something important. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I could do that, but I don't want to. <laughs> I mean, to me, this is important. And uh, like I said before, if you love, if you do something you love, just keep on love, keep doing it. You know, don't, don't listen to people. It's your passion. You know, you will be happy. You'll be, And I am very happy doing this. I really am. So, uh, so far, and then right now, the podcast, it's not, I don't think it's that successful like other ones over the mainstream. 
you know, because there's celebrities that uh, they have a lot of listeners and, uh, you know, it's like nationwide. I don't think I'm that I haven't gone to that plateau yet. But uh, who knows someday? Yeah, uh, we'll see about that. And uh, the, the most usual question they ask me, are you making money on this? You know, because uh, and the answer is yes, I am now. Well, I have been for quite a while, but uh, not in the beginning. You know, it took it took a while to co- catch on. Yes, I make it some money, not a lot. You know, it's not like you uh, the the dough is rolling in. Like <laughs> I'm making okay. I'm doing okay. I'm sorry. I'm doing okay. So that's wonderful. That really is. Uh, so you know it's funny because i know people listen they don't say anything but they listen in their car they listen on their uh devices you know and some people look forward to listening to me you know because i post something beforehand you know what's coming up i do that all the time I do previews like that because uh, it's uh, it's a lot of fun and i'm i'm glad and you know a lot of uh, people that are in the news, you know, in the media, they they post, they 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 love listen. They know who I am and they know what I do, which is great, you know. And some people mention you're famous, yeah, in a way, in a way I am, but I'm not, you know. I'm just me, you know. I just do what I love, and that's it, you know. I don't seek attention, you know. I'm not like that. I just uh, do what I do, and then continue to do Van Chicagoland, post uh, photos and all that every day. You know, uh, recently I'm posting selfies and like that, but you know, I, I got to cut that down because we, I get complaints from people that get we don't want to see your face. <laughs> I was going to ask, what's wrong with my face? What's wrong? I'm not that ugly. <laughs> All right, I don't understand. That's okay. That doesn't matter. So, uh, because I know a lot of people that I used to go to school or go to church or my old workplace, they realize uh, they're they're just surprised I'm doing this sort of thing. Yeah, it's like that. Uh, they said I found my calling. I certainly did. Now, I, I love doing it. I really do. Okay. I can't think of anything else about this, so I will continue to do my podcast for as long as I'm around. You know, there are a lot of more uh, subjects to talk about, especially when it involves Chicago history. There is. There is a lot. <laughs> yeah. I will continue to repeat certain subjects, you know. I don't know if everyone knows, but a couple of people, so why, why are you talking about this? You already talked about it. Well, it needs uh, for, it needs uh, further uh, mentioning. Why not? You know, people want to hear it again. Okay. So that's it for this part. <coughs> Excuse me. Right now, I'm going to talk about uh, American businessman Mad Men Months. Now you're asking me, and you're asking yourself or me, who is this guy, and what is, what has he got to do with Chicago? As a matter of fact, he he has a lot to do with Chicago in a way. So uh, I will explain right now. Okay. So uh, so Mad Men Muntz was an American businessman, and he sold uh, cars and consumer electronics in the United States. He started from the 1930s until he died. And he was on television a lot in the early days. And he used to dress up like uh, crazy costumes and did stunts, just like those old used car dealers (laughs) back in the old days. (laughs) Just to, you know, like Crazy Eddie. If you live on the East Coast... You know, a lot of New Yorkers remember Crazy Eddie. Uh, I don't think a lot of people in Chicago know him. Maybe they heard of him, but he was like that in a way. So he would appear, uh, he would do television commercials or in radio. And he would, um, how would I say this? Hawk his products like that. 
he he's also uh pioneer car stereos and he created the Munz stereo pack which was the four track cartridge this is a predecessor to the eight track cartridge which we all know if you grew up in the late 60s and 70s and eight the eight track mostly the 70s because i used to have eight tracks and uh and then he also his famous product of course was televisions you know they were tvs and uh he was credited for the abbreviation for uh coin coin i'm sorry coining the abbreviation for television tv for television i hope i get that right <laughs> so um yeah, so he sold cars, uh, used cars mostly. He was also the creator of the Muntz Jet. That was a sports car that had with jet-like contours. And that was man manufactured between 1951 and 1953. And uh, they were not that many produced. They were about, eh, about 300, 400 around that time. Like that. Okay. His real name was Earl William Madman Muntz. So they call him Madman, you know, for short, like that. Okay. Uh, so his biography is, I'll tell you in a moment. Okay. Uh, so he was, he was born in Elgin, Illinois. So there's a, conne there's a connection in Chicago on January 3rd, 1914. It's like the same year as my dad. You know, he died like, uh, no, he died. He, he was born a month later. And uh, so he was a high school dropout, you know. And he, when he was eight years old, he built his first radio at the age of eight and built another one for his parents' car when he was 14. So he was very handy, you know, with, uh, with his hands. And then... Uh, his parents owned a hardware store in Elgin, Illinois. I wish I knew the address. That would be interesting. I like that. And, you know, in 1934, he opened his used car lot in Elgin. You know. So, uh, and then after that, he moved to California in 1940. He was a, uh, 26 years old. And he opened a used car lot in Glendale, California. And uh, that's when he started being successful, you know. And then they, he advertised, and then he got crazy and all that. And then he closed his used car lot in Elgin later on when he opened his second lot in used car lot, that is, in, in L.A. Okay. So, and then... Uh, during that time in the 40s and the 50s, he was, uh, you know, he started in television commercials very early, like in the late 40s when television was in its infancy. So that was, so we didn't, I don't know if people in Chicago saw that, and maybe later on, like that. Okay. And then in, uh, so they uh, so he decided he wanted to design a car called the no he, he he's not responsible for that uh, to make a new sports car and it's a Munch jet car and uh, I don't know I don't know if you saw them in the in the Chicagoland area they were I mean there were a lot in L.A. that is so he made production in california and then they built they moved the production of a factory in evanston illinois i don't know where what part of evanston that is and uh they were having crazy colors like mars red stratosphere blue lime mist you know like that and uh it was capable of top speed at 125 miles per hour wow that was great. That's a, that's fast. Uh, so a lot of famous people uh, owned uh, a jet. That's what it's called. Okay. Right now, I'm going to play a commercial for Months TV. Uh, this commercial aired in 1952. And when I come back, I'll, talk, 
a little bit more about Mad Mad Months. Okay, so sit back and relax, and I'll be right back, folks. Thank you. <laughs> Factory way, no dealers to pay, it costs you less to buy. For television quality, there's nothing about a... Ladies and gentlemen, if you're considering television, buying or trading, think a moment. What set in all America costs so little, works so well. Thank you. Okay, everyone, I am back. I uh, hope you enjoyed the commercial for Months TV. That came out in 1952. Oh, boy, long time ago. That's like 70 years ago. <laughs> I found that on YouTube. So there, there are a few on, on YouTube you could check out. All right. Now, I'm going to talk about Bunce TV. Uh, he uh, he started in 1946 selling television receivers, and uh, sales began in 1947. Wow, that goes way back, way back, you know. And uh, television sets back then were very expensive, you know, not like today. So... Uh, you know, so let's see. So by about later on, then it got cheaper as demand, you know, with demand, just like how it is. And now, because back then, uh, like in the late forties, early fifties, a lot of people didn't have televisions because it was like a luxury, you know, it was considered a luxury. And then it got cheaper down the road. And then every, almost everyone in, uh, in their had one in their home. Okay. Uh, what I understand is that some people could rent them. That's what I heard. I mean, you could do that. They could do that if they like. You know, you could buy one as well. That's up to you. Uh, so, and then, um, of course, like, uh, earlier in the program, I mentioned he invented the four track tape cartridge, which is the predecessor of the eight track. So he was sort of responsible for that. You know, you put the A-Track in your car or you buy one, you know, in the appliance store. Like I did. I had one myself, you know, when I was a teenager like that. Uh, then, then he entered in home video, which was, I never knew this. So uh, he, so the, he got into the home video, and he, in 1979, he decided to sell blank tapes and VCRs. You know, VCRs were around that, you know, like Beta, Sony Betamax, the VHS. But back then, it was very expensive, you know. And then until the 80s, they got cheaper. Everyone got into VCRs. You know, Betamax went out, and... Uh, so, uh, he sort of responded. And then... Believe it or not, he got into cell phones, you know, uh, not like today, like everyone has one now, and also satellite dishes. But th that was in uh, California. I don't know the stores in Chicago. So I think they, uh, they sort of, uh, you know, gone away. I don't know when exactly they did, you know. Uh, before I get into that a little bit, I forgot to mention one thing that uh, he had the factory in Evanston, Illinois. And then uh, in 1952, he moved the the, the Jets, the Munchets cars to 2901 North Sheffield Avenue. That's between like, uh, that's near Diversity Avenue in the Lakeview neighborhood. And then the, they ceased production over there in 1954. They didn't sell any more of that. And uh, 
Of course, he had showrooms, of course, not just Chicago. He had it in L.A. He had it in Houston. They had it in New York City. And uh, so these cars, believe it or not, are a very uh, collector's item. They are now. So I don't know where they're located. They could be, um, I don't know if they're in this country or somewhere else. You know, that'd be kind of cool to see one in, uh, uh, to see what. So that'd be, that'd be real nice like that. That's what the television sets. Uh, I used to hear his name when I was growing up, you know, and a lot of people in the 60s, like the late 60s and early 70s, they used to say, you got to buy a month's TV or rent one, your months. You know, I used to see that name in advertisement. I saw it in TV guides, you know, like in from the Chicago Tribune, the Chicago Sun Times, and it said months TV. And I found an ad, uh, uh, this was from, you know, from a, it was an ad from a TV guy, you know, it was like a TV preview of the Chicago Sun Times. And they had uh, two locations. Uh, they had one at uh, 4532 North Broadway. That's on, uh, I think that's Edgewater neighborhood, I think. Uh, I'm not sure. Or Uptown. I think it's Uptown neighborhood. And they had one in the Brighton Park neighborhood on the south side at 4264 South Archway Avenue. So uh, that's kind of cool, you know, like that. So, uh, and if you wanted a TV, they delivered to you right away, like, like that. That's amazing. <laughs> These days, you just go to a store and pick one up because they're flat screen and they're very easy <laughs> to carry. Not like these big hulky ones, you know, with made out of wood, <laughs> like that. No. Okay, so um, so um, Mad Men months. He died on June twenty first, nineteen eighty seven. He was he was seventy three years old. He died in California. He married seven times, <laughs> and uh, one of his wives was uh, was Patricia Stevens. He owned she owned finishing schools, and she had one in Chicago. I'm going to talk about that one day. This will be interesting. And he had a lot of girlfriends, and, you know, he uh, rubbed elbows with a lot of celebrities back then. <laughs> oh, boy, what a what a character. <laughs> uh, later years, uh, his sons took over the business, and then they sold, I guess they sold the business after that. Uh, but they, uh, they closed the business after that. And I don't think they exist anymore. There is a documentary. They made a. Doc, I'm sorry. They made a documentary about him. Uh, so uh, that came out in 1997. I, I like to find it and watched it. So that, I think there's one on YouTube. Maybe I'll catch it. You know. So I'll watch that. Okay. So that's the reason why I chose this subject on my podcast to talk about this man, my man months. Sounds very, I was just intrigued, uh, you know, because he was a Chicagoan in a way. He was born in Elgin, so it's good that I did. Okay, that's it for this show. I'll do a recap of what I talk about. I talk about my uh, the third anniversary of Anna Chicago Land Stories, the podcast. Also, I talk about the, the life of Bad Men Months. Uh, this podcast will be published later on today, uh, wherever podcasts are available, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, Overcast, Breaker. <clears throat> Excuse me. Also, it'll be uh, posted on my blog, vanishchicagoland.blog. Also, it'll be on my YouTube channel. Again, people still ask me, where do I find your podcast? Where do I find your podcast? Go to YouTube. Do a search on YouTube, type in Van Chicago and Stories, you will find it. Click subscribe. On the apps I missed, mentioned, click follow. You get notifications of the latest episode. You can listen to previous episodes if you like, you know, at your liking. This is fine. Also, be posted on my social media accounts Facebook, X, LinkedIn, Reddit, 
uh, Instagram, Threads, and also Blue Sky. Yeah. So that's good. Also on TikTok. All right. So they'll have the link so you can listen. Or you could just, the easiest way is YouTube if you like to do that. Okay. So this is Pete Costanis, your host of Anna Chicago Land Stories, the podcast. Thank you, everyone. And thank you for joining me on the third anniversary of my show. I really appreciate it. And I appreciate the fans for listening to me. I, I really do. I'm very grateful. And uh, today is a very cold day. So stay in, stay warm. You know, you have to go out. You have to go out. I understand. I will probably do another podcast tomorrow. I have to think about what I'll discuss, you know. So I'm very happy I'm continuing doing this, you know, for the third year. I really am. So here's Bye Bye for me. And here's a little traveling music from Ray Rayner saying bye, bye, bye. Take care, everyone, and so long. We have to go. Bye, bye, bye.